Okay, welcome to Geotechnical Engineering Design. This is a series of videos uh, about uh, the theory and calculation of problems in these topics of civil engineering. Today, the video is about property walls, and we are going to start with the theory behind and to study the mechanism, which is pretty similar to the unproper wall we studied before, but it's, it's, it's good to, to see the differences in every single detail. Again, we are going to study a simple case where we have a sand with a certain unit dry weight uh, and angle of internal friction. We are going to have defined, because of this angle of, internal, angle of internal friction, the coefficient of active pressure and passive pressure. And essentially, if you see uh, and you compare the, this video with the videos before, in this case, uh, this uh, force P appear on top of the wall because we are able to produce or to, to restrict the, the displacement in the horizontal direction of this wall on the top um, because we can introduce some sort of a structure to, to keep this structure in this position. So the loads are the same. The loads to be analyzed are Q, uh, an unfavorable uh, variable load on top of the ground to the left side of the, of the wall and the self way of the wall acting as a active pressure to the left and the passive pressure to the right as it was for the unproved wall example as well. So the active pressure produced by Q is exactly the same as before, is the coefficient of active pressure multiplied by Q. And um, the active pressure because the ground, the self way of the ground is basically this triangle because there is a linear distribution of the pressure of the ground when we go deeper and deeper in the ground. And the base of this triangle that represent the pressure is a coefficient of active pressure times gamma times the total height of this wall. Um, this is the active pressure then, and we have the passive pressure to the right side, which is a triangle as well. And remember, we have two uh, types of passive pressure. We have the passive pressure in equilibrium, and we have the maximum passive pressure that the soil can develop because they, um, its um, properties, basically. So we need the forces in the very centers of every diagram. We need the force PA2 because the ground in the very center of this triangle in blue. We need PA1 in the very center of this rectangle, which is the pressure or the resultant force of the pressure of Q. And we need the very center and the distance uh, to the very center or the location of the very center of this triangle in red for the passive pressure. The mechanism in this case, as you can see, is a rotation uh, again, but because we have this force P, additionally to the other forces, the mechanism will be rotation around a point on top of the wall, which is different from the previous case where we had this mechanism at the bottom of the, of the wall. So this mechanism will be the mechanism of failure, so we need to um, ensure that you have enough forces to keep this, um, this structure in equilibrium. Basically, we need to have enough passive pressure to keep this wall in the vertical position and in equilibrium. Remember that the active pressures are the actions and the passive pressure are the reactions. So in this case, the distances we need are referred uh, from the uh, top of the wall, this point you can see on the screen on top of the wall. So all the distances are referred to this point. So um, the distance from this rectangular pressure is the same as H plus D divided by two. Um, the distance from this triangle in blue is two thirds of the height, and the distance for, uh, from the point A to the passive pressure is H plus two thirds of D. So very simple distances to be calculated. And after that, the summation of moments in this case is uh, equal to a negative moment because the passive pressure PA1 multiplied by the distance, which is half of A plus D. Negative because it's anti-crosswise because this force is producing a negative rotation around this point on top of the wall, minus two thirds of the distance of PA2, which is the moment of this force PA2, which is the uh, resultant of the active pressure because the self wave of the ground to the left. And plus in this uh, problem, the passive pressure produce a positive moment uh, PP multiplied by the distance from the force to the point A, uh, from the point of rotation again. And all of this has to be equal to zero because we have to fulfill the equilibrium in terms of summation of moments. 
is we uh, work out from the formula, this is the formula for the passive pressure uh, in function of the distances and the act pressures to the left of the wall. And we can work out as well the values of these forces because remember these forces are simple. The area of this diagram, so the area of this rectangle is PA1 and the area of this triangle is PA2. So we can work out these values and we can uh, replace in the formula. We have the formula for the passive pressure in equilibrium. The maximum passive pressure we can develop is equal to the coefficient of passive pressure multiplied by the unit weight multiplied by D. And the force, the resultant force is this value multiplied by D, again, divided by two because it's the area of the triangle and this is the expression for the maximum passive pressure to the right side of this wall. Um, what else? Okay, again, once we have um, worked out all the forces, the, the passive pressure in equilibrium and the passive pressure, the maximum passive pressure we can develop in our in our problem, in our soil, the question is to define a safety factor. And in the first place, we need to, to have a passive pressure, maximum passive pressure greater than the passive pressure in equilibrium in order to be in good conditions. So if we have more passive pressure than we need, we are going to be in good condition and we are going to have a safety factor greater than one. Um, and if this is the case, we are in good conditions in general the value of this safety factor will be defined depending on the case and can be variable between two and five more and less depending on the of the function of this area that the wall is protecting so if you have a safety factor equal to one remember what you have is the maximum passive pressure is equal to the passive pressure in equilibrium so you are about to fail so your safety factor is equal to one so you have to reinforce immediately this wall to avoid the failure. If you have a safety factor uh, smaller than one, you are in great danger, so you have to reinforce and run because this uh, wall is about to fail for sure. So uh, this is the 34 um, a propped wall. As you see, it's very similar to the unproped one, but uh, have, a similar, um, have a similar reasoning, different formulas. Uh, the mechanism is very similar, this rotation but it's rotation around another point. There is a small mistake here because this point shouldn't be here, but, um, but that's it. So thank you very much for watching as, as usual.